Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Take Back Mondays. I'm your host, Krista Molion, and today we're going to talk about a topic that is long overdue for a podcast because I talk about this all the time, one on one with my clients. So today I'd love to share that with you, my audience, so that we can really nail down who is your ideal customer. Whether or not you have a business, we will still talk about ideal customer because this is the person who you produce content for. If you are a career person and you want to build a brand and become a go-to thought leader in your industry, whether or not you have a business, you still have an ideal customer. You're producing content for this ideal customer, sometimes known as a avatar. And the ideal way of doing it is to speak to them instead of trying to please everybody and produce content for everybody, produce content with that one person in mind. But it's a lot easier said than done. So today I'm going to walk you through how you can find your ideal customer. Are you guys ready? Let's go into it. So number one is defining what are the services that you want to help a person with? What are they struggling with? And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is to say, well, I know about 15 or 20 things that a person may be struggling with. And that is definitely not a good starting point. Instead, you want to go into which of those things do I particularly want to focus on and preferably as a niche. Because if you try to serve everybody, you will end up serving no one. And just because you can help multiple types of people doesn't mean you should. Why shouldn't you? Well, for one, not everybody is coachable. So within the group of people who you could help, certain people are not receptive to coaching. They're not open to learning. They're not going to follow through. And that's the type of person who I would say is not coachable. So you want to rule those people out right away. The second group within the people you could help who you want to rule out are the people who can't pay for your service. And some of my clients say, wait a minute, I would like to help people even if they can't pay for my service. Then it isn't a business, it's a volunteer kind of position. And I would really recommend that you define what your ultimate goal is, like, why are you doing that? And then set boundaries around it. So maybe you say, um, once a month, I'm going to go and do a free training for this group. And it's very clean cut. It's not ongoing every single day or open to all. And, And you're doing something good. So I have nothing wrong with that. It's not all about money after all. In fact, when you think about what you can help people with, often it's something that you love doing that you would probably do whether or not you get paid if you could. But most of us actually need to make a livelihood. And, you know, I think there's a place for free and paid services. In fact, I have a whole different episode to talk about that, uh, that I can refer you to. But in this particular episode, I just want to stick with finding that ideal customer to serve. But when I say that you shouldn't be helping everybody, it's true because certain people are going to just try to take advantage of you. And that's why if you're going to do something for free, I highly recommend that you set boundaries from the get-go and you're very clear about when you're doing it, why you're doing it, and limiting it so that it doesn't take over your life. Um, 
And one of the biggest reasons for that is that I've noticed that people who get things for free are usually the ones who drive you the most crazy and are the less appreciative. And I have this in my own business. I've seen that whenever I do something for free, there's more people who attend, but less of them seem to follow through with the material because they didn't pay for it. So they don't feel obliged and they're not going to leave you a review. Whereas people who paid for a service are twice as likely to follow through and be appreciative of it and leave you a review or a recommendation or a whatever it is. And I truly believe that you can't build a business without reviews and you can't build a business if, if the people aren't following through. So to get more serious people, you want to make sure they're coachable and they're willing to invest. And so it's not as much about the money as the symbolic reason of them. Once they are paying for a service that they tend to take it more seriously and actually go through with the entire program, pay attention, do the homework and ultimately get the results that you want, because otherwise, why are you doing it? If a person isn't planning on taking it seriously, they're going to flake, they're not going to finish it. Then in a way, it's, it doesn't matter if it's free or paid. It just matters that you didn't really deliver the service to them. Um, so those are the two types of people I would weed out right away. The third type of person to narrow it down to that ideal client is going to be the almost ready customer. The almost ready customer is someone who says that they want the service that you can provide, but they're not quite at a stage in their life where they're ready for the service. What does that mean? For example, let's say that somebody is um, thinking about starting a business, but they don't have time to invest in the business because they have small children, they don't have any childcare, they're really focused on taking care of their children, and they just, even though they want to grow their business, they're not willing or able to make time for it. Or another situation is somebody who's in a really toxic job. And this job is just, they're working, you know, 60 hours a week. They're totally burned out. They come to you and they're like, I want help to quit my job. And those people aren't ideal customers either because they're so burned out. They don't have the energy to invest in something new. What they need to do is they need to quit their job, take a sabbatical and then rest up and then move on to the next thing in their lives. Um, because they're not going to, they're not going to be able to give any good thing <laughs> if they don't have the energy um, and when someone comes to me with that situation, I always tell them, save up, save up six months of living expenses and then quit so that you can really get away from that toxic job. Or maybe during that six months, just be really actively carving out time to job hunt. Let everybody know you're looking for a, a different job, depending on what your ultimate goal is. If you want to start your own business or you want to find a different job, but no matter what, um, those are, those are two examples of scenarios where it's probably not going to work out, even though they could be your ideal customer, they're just not ready for you. A third type of customer who says they want your service, but they're not ready for you is one who is in an abusive relationship. I have seen this many times more than I would like to admit where the person is lacking the support that they need to make changes in their life. And not only that, but they're being boycotted by the person who should be the most supportive, who is actually the contrary, not supportive at all. And in this scenario, it's really hard for them to start any kind of new program, to make any changes, to work with any kind of coach or mentor, because 
this abusive relationship is just so strong. I mean, obviously, if you live with a person who is not good for you or not supportive of you, then you can't really get away. There is no place that you can run and hide from that person. So that would be another situation where the person is not an ideal customer, even though they could be. Um, now, I think that to find your ideal customer, you really um, want to start off by seeing two things. Number one, who are you naturally attracting with your content? So if you start putting out regular content online on your social platform of choice, whether it's a blog or it's Instagram or it's someplace else, a YouTube channel, podcast, you want to try to get statistics to understand who are the people who are commenting, who are liking, who are subscribing. And this will really help you to better understand who you serve by just naturally who's interested in what you're offering. But again, your audience isn't everybody. So the people who may follow you uh, may not really be that loyal into your stuff. So take it with a grain of salt, but it's definitely a great starting point. The other thing you can do is you can run for a limited time under very, very well-defined conditions, a free service offering. For example, when I started my coaching business, I organized a six-week program where I agreed one hour per week to meet with a group of people and do a sort of group coaching mastermind with these people to test out my services on them. Why did I do that? Is the same reason I advise anybody who's new and you're going out on your own to offer a service is you may not have the background of teaching other people. In my case, I have the expertise, but I'd never actually coached other people. I'd mentored some people, but never coached. So I didn't feel it would be right to take people's money when I wasn't sure if I was going to be good at this or not. So I went ahead and I offered that service. And what I wanted from them was an honest review. Um, I didn't ask them to do a recommendation. I just wanted feedback from them. And it was very beneficial. So I highly recommend considering that to find your ideal customer what I did learn from that experience was who I couldn't help. And I think who I couldn't help were people who weren't that motivated. And when I say they're not that motivated, there's a saying that my grandfather used to say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So let's say that you are a weight loss coach and you have offered a group of people to coach them how to lose their weight. And these people seem to be the ideal customer because they all meet the criteria of being overweight and saying that they want to lose the weight. Well, once you start coaching them, you'll see that there's like a night and day thing happening. Certain people are really serious about losing the weight. The other people aren't. And they'll either flake on you very early on and just disappear, or they'll cheat and maybe even lie to you about it. I mean, so seriously, the motivation factor is what makes all the difference between the ideal customer and the not so ideal customer, even when you have some criteria defined that seem to make the people equal. Um, so how do you figure out who's serious and who's not? Well, one of the best ways is just a good old fashioned charge money because most people, unless they're extremely wealthy or extremely insane, aren't going to spend a lot of money invested into a program or a coach and then just flake. Um, some will, but very few. So we can assume safely that the majority of people consider paying for something to be a sign that they actually want to do it. And again, if you see a lot of people flaking, then you need to raise your rates. 
because the lower the rates are, the more likely you'll have people who are like, well, it was only so much dollars. It didn't matter. Um, sad, but true. So your pricing can play a big role in attracting your ideal customer. Um, but with that said, I would also consider if you're going to have high rates for your coaching or your program, whatever you're selling, that you should have a payment plan in place for people who legitimately want the service, but just can't maybe afford to pay everything up front. Um, that's at your discretion, but I do feel that could help. Um, but no matter what, what you're doing is you're sending out a message that you need to commit. And that's so good for your audience. Now, when we're going to define your ideal customer, we're going to start by defining a general term. So I used an example a minute ago, like people who are overweight, who say they want to lose the weight. That's great. Um, or maybe your service is for new moms, or maybe you work with corporate uh, managers who have teams. Whatever it is, first start with your general uh, keywords about who these people are. And then you can go deeper. <clears throat> you can go deeper. Depending on what service it is, are you going to be working with these people one-on-one? -on -one? Then you're going to look at personal factors. If you're going to be working with them only in a corporate setting, then you want to look more on corporate criteria. So it can go two ways. If you're working with them in a corporate environment, the main thing you want to see <clears throat> is which niche you can serve best. So you know, corporate managers who have teams is, is the, the generic version. So then we want to start narrowing it down by saying, what would be the criteria that they would need you most? Let's say that you are a burnout coach. Well, if you're a burnout coach and you're going to teach um, corporate employees how to balance their time better, how to manage their energy, how to maintain self-care, so that they don't burn out, then you probably want to go towards an industry where people tend to burn out more. And there's a lot of available um, public information studies that have been done that show which professions, which industries are more high stress. And so instead of just putting, I serve corporate managers and their teams, you would say, um, particularly in, for example, medical field, legal field, accountants, there's, there's definitely um, certain subgroups who suffer more from burnout. Um, and the same thing for new moms. So are you serving new moms who are going right back to work? Or are you serving new moms who are going to stay home with their kids? Or are you serving new moms who are, have their kids in childcare and now want to build a business, want to go to a part-time job? So be really specific there. So you start from the general term, but then very quickly, you want to add this, this little sentence, who, and then complete the sentence. So new moms who want to return to work right away full-time or, um, you know, corporate managers and their teams in the legal field or in the medical field. Now, if you are working one-on-one -on -one with people, you can get even more personal. So you can look into where do they live? The geography is very important. Um, what are those types of people who you think you can better serve? Most of the time, um, I like to say that the ideal, ideal customer is a former version of yourself. Uh, so a lot of people who offer services are people who used to struggle with that one thing that they figured out how to solve, and now they help other people solve it. So if this is a former version of you, then you could be your own avatar and you could define 
criteria about yourself to attract the customer who is like you. Because that will guarantee relatability. If you're attracting somebody like you, you'll know how to talk to them. You'll know their likes and dislikes. Of course, you're not a clone of a carbon copy of hundreds of other people, but you'll know some of the language, the frustrations, the fears that they might be dealing with. So you'll know better how to talk to them. I highly discourage anybody trying to define a customer avatar for a group of people that they really don't relate to. Like if you are saying, okay, I want to work with these people, but in your friends group, in your family, in your life, you don't know any people like that, then it's going to be twice as hard for you. So ideally, it should be you or it should be definitely people around you who you know. Um, For example, one of my clients is a fat loss coach. And she herself has always been very into sports. But the reason that she became so conscious about taking care of herself and even chose to go into that field as her profession is because she grew up with an obese mom and she was constantly watching her mom struggling with health due to obesity. And so she knew firsthand a lot about the topic. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's either you or it's someone close to you. Those are the best clients overall. Age plays a role too, because of how you're going to talk to the client. So if you're dealing with boomers, you're going to use vocabulary and tactics that are very different than if you're going to be working with Gen Z. So defining a person's age is important in this scenario, because why, why are we even doing this exercise? When you know your customer avatar, you can write really good sales copy that speaks their language, that uses the words they use, that they really relate to. Then when they read, they will immediately be drawn in and want to talk to you because they'll say, wow, that person really gets me. Or that's exactly what I was thinking. They're mind readers. And that's what you want. You want that this ideal customer can really relate to what you're saying. Um, And then we want to check their job situation. Uh, We want to know all about that, their income range. How can you do your pricing if you don't know their income? You really have to narrow down your services to service people in a certain income bracket That's absolutely key. So if you're trying to service people from all income levels, then you better have products that are designed for all income levels. And that's going to require a lot more, a lot more of your time, a lot more of your energy. Um, So ideally you would keep it simple. You would define in advance. I'm going to be working with people who are um, upper level managers, in big cities in the US who are making um, anywhere over 150K and and beyond, Um, you know, you really have to define it. And then you can make all your pricing where you know absolutely they can afford it. Another thing that's great is if you can figure out what what kind of uh, publications they like, what do they read? Which podcast do they listen to? Uh, Where do they like to hang out on social media? What kind of uh, books and influencers really appeal to them or brands do they love? And all of that will really help you show up in the right places and talk to them in the right way. Because the last thing you'd want to do is make some joke that is cultural and they don't understand it because it refers to like a pop sitcom or a Netflix show that they just don't watch, they've never heard of. So the more you know about them, the better you can target them. But that's not the real goal here. The real goal 
is to figure out what is bothering them. What really are their problems? And one of my tips to you to better understand your customer avatar is to interview people. Now, how do you do that? A minute ago, I said that the best customer is usually a former version of yourself or somebody close to you that you know. Interview them. Find a support group of people in the category that you used to be in and contact them and say, I'm conducting some research. Would you have time just for a 15 minute call? I have some questions to ask that would really help me, or I'm building a program, or I'm writing a book, or I'm writing a paper. Can I ask you a couple of questions? And you could even give them a, a reward, like an Amazon gift card, if you feel it's necessary. But honestly, if you approach people the right way, people will be more than happy to talk to you for free. Another place to go is inside of forums. Like I said, if there's a support group for that area, that problem, then go and spend time in there. Look at the questions people are asking and look at the answers, look at the comments. That will really help you get ideas for where their biggest challenges are. I personally produce a lot of my content based on comments on my content or comments or posts of others related to my area of expertise. Um, you know, another thing that would be great is to understand if, um, if they're the only decision maker or not. So if you're going to approach corporate managers, they might not be the decision maker. It may be the HR people who need to approve you, and then they will route you over to the management team. So before you start ramping up and, and targeting certain people, you also want to understand how the process would work. Or if you are going to be coaching new moms who want to start a business, maybe they aren't the breadwinner. They're not actually making the money and they will need to get every expense approved by their husband. So you want to check in on those details as well. So you understand how to approach people with your sales packages. And most importantly, you know, do, do they need to get back to you because they need to double check this, run this by the person who's actually paying for it. Um, and lastly, what are their sales objections? Uh, why would they not buy the service? So when someone says, I want to change, or I really need this, but then they don't buy, most of the time it's fear. They may be not coachable. It may not be the right time in their lives, but it's good to understand that. It's good to talk to people and learn how to have discovery calls, learn how to network with people, and even just run it by people who you're not actually selling to, but who meet the criteria. And you could say, if I set up a paid mastermind for X amount of dollars per, per month or per, for 12 months, would you join? Why or why not? And just see what people say. But overall, my best advice for you, like absolute best advice for you, is to commit to spending time around those ideal customers, seek them out and really get into spending time with them. Setting up your own community is a great idea too. And then start inviting people into the community, start giving free advice. I'm a big believer of free content. Content is king. How do people discover me is they're searching for keywords. And one of my videos pops up, one of my podcasts pops up. Uh, the same for you. So just remember that you cannot help everyone. And it's so important not to get pulled into working with bad clients. So having very clear conditions, having a bulletproof contract in place, having non-disclosure agreements, 
and getting paid up front is a very big one too um, on my list. You know, you never want to work with someone with the understanding that they will pay you later. It always backfires. Um, narrowing it down to your geography, who are you going to be working with? Um, you know, maybe you say, well, I can work with digital nomads, but they probably will come from a certain demographic to begin with. Um, their income level, super important. Super important because how are you going to price your services? You should never hear this is too expensive. That is either you are in the wrong market or it's an excuse that has nothing to do with the price. It's they don't see the value of that service or they're not, it's not valuable enough to them to justify the cost or the trust issue. They just don't trust you. Um, knowing your customers' motivations, knowing really what are they dreaming of? Like right now, what's their before after scenario? Write down all the pain points that they're suffering under right now. And then write down all the things they would love to have happen in their life if they could fix the problem. Um, you know, what do they want to get out of the service? Make sure that there's goals attached to this. And if you really want to avoid the people who, uh, who flake and lose motivation, I mentioned earlier about having a clear price, but I have another su suggestion for you. And what that is, is to have them write down and tell you their why. Why do they want to achieve this? The more you can get people to talk about their why, the more likely they are to follow through and actually do the program and actually stick with it and not walk away. Because when they feel demotivated, they will have that reminder that they're doing it for these reasons. People are twice as likely to complete a program if they have strong why. Um, and then they've paid. So the financial investment really will help a lot with motivation. So, and then another thing you can do with your ideal customer, spend a lot of time with them, go in the communities, go in the forums, start your own community and run things by them. Say, so if I started a mastermind for about approximately this amount of money, would you guys be in? Would you join? Find out what, what people are saying, you know, um, the best thing you can do is talk to your customers a lot and listen. Listening is just a big one. Listen to what they're telling you, uh, what they're telling others, what they're talking about, what their frustrations are, their fears. Um, you can also check your own content. If you become a consistent content creator, you can look through your posts or look through your videos, uh, figure out what's the most popular. And that will also guide you on where people need the most support. So if I see that one of my videos got like 10 times higher views than every other video, I know for sure that there's something behind that. And I should probably create a follow-up video, or I should probably go in more depth into it or, or hit the same topic with a different angle or interview someone or do some live coaching around that topic, whatever it is. Eventually, I'll probably build a paid program around it if I don't have one already, because I see there's so much interest in that topic. So those are just some ways that you can really uh, align with your ideal customer. And I can't end this without mentioning that there are a lot of crappy customers out there. And this really doesn't have to do with ideal or not ideal because they may be exactly the person who meets all your criteria. They just turn out to be a crappy customer. And I've actually done a different podcast episode about how to repel those people so that you, you stick with your ideal customer. Uh, so just wanted to mention that again, because despite your best efforts, you may always find people aren't as great as they seem <laughs> um, after starting to work with them. So I hope these tips are helpful for you. Um, I really would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment about your ideal customer. If you have any questions 
or you think I, I missed something that you want to add, I want to hear it. And, and while you're here, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. I produce weekly content for business owners and for uh, ambitious career-driven professionals who really want to own their career, achieve their best self. And we talk about business marketing and mindset. So come hang out with me in the future by subscribing so you don't miss any future episodes. Take care, guys, and have a wonderful day and find those ideal customers.